Hi, I'm Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation. And this topic is interesting. Why is my husband so controlling? Is there anything I can do? So let's get real and let's know that before you got married, your husband was, as you say, controlling. But let's look at this a little bit deeper, okay? Let's not just go, oh, my husband's controlling. What can I do about him? What could I do? Instead, let's take a look at how you are reacting rather than why is he controlling and what can I do about that? Let's work on what we always should be working on when we're married, and that is ourselves. It isn't your fault that he is controlling. It's not your fault that he has flaws. It's not his fault that you have flaws. But it's very interesting, isn't it, how things are set up in this world. I think God has this great imagination, and we know that his agenda, God's agenda, is for us to evolve, to grow, to become more and more happy, more and more in his wisdom, more and more. And this is not religious, more and more loving. And he gave us marriage in order for us to learn the lessons that we need in order to evolve. You know, we live in a world when we're not married where we can easily choose where we're going to be today, where we're going to be tomorrow, who we can dismiss, who we can embrace as our friends, who we can reject. And so what happens is when we meet our soulmate, isn't it very beautiful? You remember when you found your husband to be your soulmate and you chose to marry him, how wonderful it was. And you could say, well, he wasn't like that when we got married. Yes, he was. And what happened was you saw past all of his flaws. He saw past all of your flaws. But what happens is, we are not taught about marriage. We are not taught about ourselves. We don't realize how our mind functions and interferes with our soul's love. We're not taught this growing up because the world, as advanced as it may appear to be technologically, and it's really not that far along technologically either, spiritually, which is what we are, we're spiritual beings. Again, it's not religious we are pretty far behind. You know, we look at the saints in the world who have come and we go, oh, wow, I worship you, you're so great. They're just behaving normally because they're souls and they recognize it. We're souls and we're sucked into this mundane existence thinking, you know, I am this, I am that. No, I am a soul. I am free, I am love. I am joy. So it is our job to evolve, to become happier, not because of outer conditions, but to become happier because that is what our true nature is, is happiness. That is our mission in life. Then we get into this marriage. And the marriage, I call it a sacred space. It's just two of you in this environment. And now you, you can't choose to dismiss him as your husband. You can't just walk away. You're in it. And so what happens is we are challenged. We are challenged to rise above our little likes and dislikes, our attachments, and we become that which we are meant to be. So it is a challenge with a purpose. It is a challenge for us to take a look at ourselves and go, so what if he's bossy? I am love. I am going to look past this flaw that he has and love him with all of my heart, mind, and soul, because that's why I married him. I didn't marry him for what he would do for me. I didn't marry him so that he would be kind to me and loving and hear everything that I have to say and do everything that I want. 
No, but we don't learn this. By the way, I hope you're a subscriber. If not, now's a good time to subscribe. So what you really want to do is you want to stand back a little bit when he's being bossy and in your mind say, I love you so much. I love you so much. Don't hear his bossiness. Don't label him as being bossy. If you're going to label him, label him as being your soulmate, you see. We get married in order to be happy. We get married in order to learn to love unconditionally. It's a perfect setup for joy, but we're not taught this, are we? Yeah, it's a very, very interesting thing. Now, I'm not blaming anybody saying, God, why didn't they teach us this? They don't know. The Marriage Foundation is literally the cutting edge, literally. You know, I, I'm not a psychologist. I love psychologists because they're the ones who chose to help others, but they have been mistaught. You see, they are taught this, what I consider to be primitive stuff, this Freudian stuff and Jungian stuff uh, to go in and psychoanalyze. It's meaningless in the day-to-day -day existence because they don't even say, your whole mission is to become happy. They don't say that. They go, your mission is to discover why he behaves that way, why I'm reactive. No, I don't even care why you're reactive. I want you to be focused on proactively becoming happy. That is your mission. You take a look at all that we have to offer, whether it's these free videos or the articles or the books that I've written or the courses that I have, it's all geared towards happiness because we get married to be happy. We get married to feel love, don't we? Isn't that why you got married? So put aside this analytical stuff, the intellectual stuff. Marriage is not to be lived on the plane of analysis. It's to be lived on the highest planes of happiness and love. That's what it's all about. And by the way, if you've been following me and you're a psychologist, many psychologists follow your clergy, or you've been a relationship coach, or you just want to learn more to help others, become a TMF marriage counselor. It's now an offering that we have, and I want you to join us so we can change the world with this. Shouldn't the world be filled with joy? Shouldn't it begin in the home? That's what it's all about. I am so appreciative that you have stopped by. I do hope you like this video. You could leave a comment. God bless you. Thank you. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation and I appreciate you. Take care.